Whilst attending a conference in Las Vegas, noted UFO researcher Stan Hernandez was approached by a forlorn looking individual who had a tragic and harrowing story to tell. The man was a long haul trucker who had recently lost his wife, an incident which had left behind a disturbing mystery regarding the events that led to her death. Over the last half century or so, and perhaps far longer, there has been an undercurrent eddying beneath the surface of our circumstance, one which has tried in earnest to rise and break free, but has always been suppressed by disinformation, quelled by disbelief, and neutered by ridicule. A worldwide phenomenon, experienced by millions, yet given no credence by the mainstream. It all began with a story back in 1961 a story told by a middle-aged couple about how their late night car journey was interrupted and how they had been taken away against their will. Soon, other stories began to emerge, told by those emboldened by this couple's bravery in approaching the press. Stories of torment, stories of indescribable horror, stories of small creatures with huge, terrifying black eyes that visit you late in the night and take you away. We are of course referring to the alleged phenomenon that is alien abduction. We have covered some of these cases in this series before, and there are others yet to be presented, some of which have become well known throughout history and have set the template for modern abduction cases. That said, credible accounts of this phenomenon are hard to come by as the waters are often muddied by the stigma that surrounds these supposed encounters. It is no wonder that so many people choose not to talk about their experiences, either through fear of being labelled a kook, or the apprehension of having to relive their horrifying memories. In spite of these setbacks, some ufologists do their utmost to reach out to victims of these frightening encounters, at times offering them solace and support and even contact with other individuals with similar stories to share. Some will go to unconventional lengths to distribute these stories to the wider public, in the hopes of not only raising awareness, but to issue a warning that something disturbing may be happening in the background, to which we are completely oblivious. Stan Hernandez is one such ufologist, who makes his living by reaching out to victims of supposed alien abduction. Working as a reporter for an online group, Hernandez has stated that his sole objective is to prove the existence of aliens and UFOs, and even though he is pushing his mid-80s, he has proven to be both dogged and resilient in his determination. Hernandez made the bold claim that he was once a member of the US Army personnel stationed at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, at the time of the infamous UFO incident. He alleges that he was ordered never to talk about his time there, but ultimately broke his silence years later. As a dedicated researcher and victim's advocate, Hernandez has been invited to speak at numerous events throughout the United States, and it was at one such event in Las Vegas that one of the most tragic cases in recent memory was brought to his attention. The date was the 15th of January 2013 and Hernandez was one of many guest speakers invited to attend the weekend-long UFO convention. As he later recounted, he was conversing with fellow researcher Russell Tetro in the lobby of his hotel, when out of the corner of his eye, he noticed a middle-aged man standing nearby, watching him intently. This individual seemed reluctant to approach him, but appeared in need of assistance. As soon as Hernandez had finished his conversation with Tetro, 
this man cautiously made his way over, and after a few full starts, asked Hernandez if they could talk somewhere in private. He introduced himself as Scott Murray, and told the puzzled UFO researcher that he needed his help. Murray was 48 years old, and had worked most of his adult life as a long-haul trucker, travelling across the country. When he stated his reason for wanting to meet Hernandez, he tearfully began to relate the beginning of a long, heartbreaking story. According to Murray, he was on the road late one night in Michigan, when without warning, he received a phone call from his wife, Elizabeth, who was back at home. He was alarmed to hear a distressed tone in her voice. To his horror, Elizabeth claimed that she was out in their backyard, when she had suddenly blacked out, and upon waking several hours later, she believed she had been drugged and sexually assaulted. Needless to say, Murray frantically turned his truck around and headed home, telling her to call the police, which she could not do due to her panicked state. He arrived home a few hours later to find Elizabeth still in a state of shock and terrified beyond belief. After he had managed to calm her down, Murray was astonished when he heard his sobbing wife, who was normally a down-to-earth, rational individual, whisper in his ear, I know this sounds crazy, but I think it was aliens. They took me, and they did horrible things to me. Shocking as this was, he initially dismissed it, and put it down to her delirious state of mind. His assumptions were seemingly confirmed when he took her to the emergency room later that night, and the medical examiners informed him that they had found no signs of sexual assault on his wife. There had in fact been nothing out of the ordinary, apart from an odd burn on her right shoulder, which Murray did not feel too concerned about. Nevertheless, rather than going back to work, he decided to stay home with Elizabeth to help her recover from the events of the previous evening, whatever those events had been. However, the following morning, he stepped out into his backyard to mow the lawn, and it was here that he found signs that perhaps not everything was as it seemed. Off in the corner, he found four large identical burn marks imprinted on the grass in a circular pattern, and a smaller burn on a fence board nearby. Murray was puzzled to say the least. He knelt down and picked up a few blades of the blackened grass, which was so brittle it disintegrated in his palm and set about investigating the scene. Looking up, he discovered that several of the leaves on the trees were also burned black, but what alarmed him was that they hung almost 20 feet over his head. It was as though something hot had hovered above the trees and scorched the leaves and the earth below. Murray felt there was something odd about the whole scene, and suspected that there might be more to his wife's disturbing account than he had originally believed. Deciding that Elizabeth's recovery was more important at the time, Murray attempted to help her get through the trauma, but as time passed, she started to behave erratically, and he surmised that a part of her was attempting to relive the experience. This prompted him to seek the help of a hypnotist, who managed to get her to recall the events of that evening, to alarming detail. She alleged that she had been out in the backyard, when a large object had hovered above her, shrouding her in a bright light, in the exact same place the burn marks had appeared on the lawn. She was then taken aboard the object, and presented before a group of strange entities, who proceeded to perform a number of intrusive acts upon her. Whatever was done to her, was enough to leave her in a catatonic state in the days following the encounter, and this left Murray with a dilemma of what to do to protect her. His week away from work was coming to an end, and so he decided to provide her with a handgun for self-defence. This would result in the worst possible outcome. The next night, Murray returned home from work to find Elizabeth lying dead on the floor of their living room with a single gunshot wound to the head. Her experience had proved far too much for her mind to accept, and tragically, she had turned the gun on herself. Overcome by grief, Murray was almost inconsolable at first, but as time went on, he decided that he needed to hunt for answers. He proceeded to collect several samples of the burned grass, and then set about finding a specialist who could study them. Spurred on by his desire to prove his wife's story, 
Murray took these samples to a nearby college and left them with the head researcher, who, after reviewing the blades of grass, contacted Murray to tell him that there were trace amounts of radiation found in the samples. This buoyed Murray's hopes, but as the days went by, he heard nothing further. When he returned to the college to ask for more information, he was told something entirely different. The researchers at the science lab flatly told him that there were in fact no conclusive signs of radiation, and that they wanted nothing further to do with the samples. This alarmed Murray, and suggested to him that perhaps someone higher up had told them to refute the findings. His search for answers appeared to be over at that time. However, Murray then learned of Stan Hernandez, and made his way to Las Vegas, and delivered his story to him in the hopes of obtaining advice on how to proceed next. When Hernandez presented this story at the convention, it created a stir of interest amongst the community, but for many, it was just one more harrowing account of a bereaved victim falling into the depths of despair. Elizabeth Murray's untimely death seems to highlight the possibility that other victims of alien abduction might find themselves in similar situations, without ways of obtaining assistance or advice. Numerous details about her experience appear to be in line with other alleged encounters with extraterrestrial beings. Based on the tale Hernandez recorded, it can be surmised that Elizabeth may have been taken aboard a craft of some kind and experimented upon. The fact that few, if any, signs of external wounds or injury appeared on her body could indicate that whoever these beings were, they utilised advanced surgical procedures modern science cannot identify. The presence of radiation burns on the grass also seemed reminiscent of supposed radioactive residue often discovered at sites where UFOs allegedly appear. The burn on his wife's shoulder could also be construed as supporting evidence, as the craft had apparently appeared directly above her, and what else could have left such burn marks behind? When he first discovered them, Murray initially believed that a fireball of some kind had bounced around his yard. It was only later that he began to give credence to his wife's story. No one else reported seeing a light or lights in the sky on the night in question, but Murray was quick to point out that his home was more than two miles away from his closest neighbour. That said, we are inclined to ask if this story is in fact genuine. This is not to cast doubt on the bereaved Murray, nor to discredit his late wife's encounter as a hoax. His account is indeed vivid and detailed, but it has not progressed any further than Stan Hernandez. Hernandez is well respected amongst the UFO community, but there are numerous people who have reason to question his background and credentials. First of all, Hernandez states that he is a reporter for an online UFO research group, but said website is titled The Ringside Report, which is in fact a defunct online boxing publication. For whatever reason, he posts some of his victims' stories in the hopes of obtaining assistance for them, though rarely do they receive any. He even posted Murray's story on this website, but it has since been removed, even though numerous other sites have posted blogs about it, including this channel. Secondly, a number of researchers have pointed out that some of the photos of individuals who apparently contacted Hernandez regarding their experience are in fact those of known sex offenders. Whenever he is asked to comment on these claims, he and his editors refuse to respond, and many of those accounts and images are quietly removed a few days later. It could be that Hernandez posts these accounts, and then assigns a random placeholder image from Google in order to protect identities, but even if that is the case, it seems a careless way to conduct business. Lastly, it seems that many of the stories he reports on tend to share similar details. Murray's is not the first account where someone has taken their own life in the aftermath of an experience. It seems almost coincidental that the Scott Murray tale came in the wake of another case involving one Buck Stabler, a man who in October 1988 was reportedly the victim of alien abduction. When he first took his story to the media, he faced endless amounts of ridicule and derision, some of which almost ruined his life. He was able to reach out to Hernandez in September 2012 for an interview, in which he claimed the experience had left him severely depressed and traumatised. Unfortunately, Stabler committed suicide in December that year, a tragedy 
which was slandered further by naysayers that his story was a fraud. Hernandez himself explains this by saying that there is a determined effort by authorities to shut him down, that his website is regularly hacked and fake stories and images are uploaded to discredit him and spread disinformation. Whether or not his credibility is a factor in this investigation, what has seemed to be most detrimental to the case is the lack of activity since its presentation. Missing details, such as the fact that there is no set timeline, only serve to denigrate this story further. Neither Murray nor Hernandez made any mention of just when and where these events took place. The college that Murray supposedly submitted his samples to has also never been named, and there has never been any evidence to suggest those samples even existed. There is just so little evidence to either refute or confirm this story, which is not to say that it is not genuine, but the lack of proof is a concern. For all we know, there may well have been a woman named Elizabeth Murray, who was indeed abducted by extraterrestrial beings, experimented upon, and who then committed suicide out of despair. And for all we know, her grief-stricken husband may indeed have sought advice on the strange burn marks he found in his backyard, only to meet a dead end and find little to no answers to explain what happened. But regrettably, we do not have anything else to go on, and in the aftermath of such a story, we are left with more questions than answers. It is never easy to answer those questions when they relate to supposed alien abduction. The evidence is nearly always anecdotal, and just as easy to fabricate as it is hard to disprove. If this story is bogus, then it is a real shame and an insult to other people who truly believe they have experienced something so life-changing. On the other hand, if this story is true, five years have passed since Elizabeth Murray took her own life, going by the date Hernandez first presented this story. We can only hope that Scott finds, or has found, the answers he is looking for, and that he can continue to honour the memory of his beloved wife until they meet again. <laughs>